Hi, and welcome to the course Hands-on Kotlin Web Development with KTOR. My name is Mike Miller Nielsen, and let me introduce myself. I am 42 years old. I have 20 plus years of IT experience. I have a bachelor in chemistry from the Danish University of Technology. I'm running my own YouTube channel about programming and frameworks and about programming languages. I'm a senior freelance developer. I enjoy programming and I love Kotlin and Java. Sometimes I also teach within different IT related subjects like XML, XSD and also Spring Boot. Now let us look at this course. What we will learn. In the first section we will get started with Kotlin and Kato. In here we will start up default project with IntelliJ's Kato plugin. We will also go to the Kato start uh, website and create a project there. In the second section, we will understand the Kato lifecycle. We will understand the default phases. We will create our own custom phase and then hook this custom phase into the default phases. In the third section, we will continue working with Kato and here we will understand the REST API. And we will create our own REST API and we will get the information from the requests like the header and also like request parameters. In the fourth section, we will go into error handling and authentication. Here we will actually apply basic authentication to certain routes. In the fifth section, we will persist data in a Mongo database. We will create our own data manager that can actually add or insert or delete or update data whenever we want it. In the sixth section, we will go into testing with Kato. Here we will look into performance testing, integration testing, and also unit tests. In the seventh section, we will prepare for deployment. Here we will change the build script so we can create a fat jar. We will also set up some Docker images so we can actually create a Docker image that will run the Kator application. In the eighth section, we will dig into the web UI with Kator. That means some HTML templating and also CSS templating with the CSS DSL and the HTML DSL. So what are the prerequisites to start this course? It would be nice to have some basic Java programming skills. It would also be nice to have some basic Kotlin programming skills. And it would also be nice to have some knowledge about IntelliJ. Even though you can use your own development environment like Eclipse, if you prefer that, it would also be preferred if you have some basic knowledge about web applications. It's also preferred if you have some basic knowledge about NoSQL databases like MongoDB. And if you have installed JDK 14 or something that is newer, then that is fine. If not, then IntelliJ can actually provide this JDK. The Kotlin SDK. If you don't have this, then IntelliJ can also download this SDK. So what are the course goals? First of all, we need to get an overview of the Kotlin and all of its features. We would like to know what is the responsibility of a backend and why is Kato a good choice as a backend? We would like to understand how to apply the most common features to everyday problems. We would like to get some hands on experience with Kato through the bookstore application that we developed through the course. We would like to learn some techniques about how to create a REST API. We would also learn how to present HTML and CSS through HTML templating and through the HTML and CSS DSLs. We should also get some knowledge about basic authentication and routes. We would also like to acquire testing skills for integration tests, performance tests, and unit tests. We would also like to learn how to build and deploy a Kato application with Gradle and Docker. So let's get started.